Hello YouTube people, I have a very happy problem. <laughs> you know, if all problems in life were like this, life would be just amazing. And my problem is that I simply, I am not watch collector. I just don't have that kind of a mindset. And I don't like having two of the same. And these two watches for me are basically the same thing, almost. Because they are the most beautiful, the prettiest, the most expensive looking watches I currently have. And one has to go, simply, one has to go so I, so I would have an ease of mind, simple as that. In this video, I will do a little review of this watch, of this Parnas watch. Yeah, because I haven't done that before. I'll show you how this watch looks on a person on these straps. Will tell you my opinion about this watch, etc, etc. And if you want to see a review of this watch, review is already done. Check the link in the description. Wonderful watch. So. I will be honest with you, the previous review of Black Pagani was a little bit of a failure, was uh, too long and boring, so I'll try to s swap those straps a little bit quicker <laughs> to make this video look entertaining. Anyway, first of all, review of this watch, later on, comparison between these two. So move all those things aside, let's talk about this watch. So how is the bracelet? It's nice, it doesn't have sharp edges, feels wonderful. And it has solid links, solid, solid end links. Also, links are connected with screws, so they are very easy to adjust. And the clasp also doesn't have sharp edges, feels wonderful. Except there is one problem, that the locking mechanism has a little bit of a free play. But that's not a big deal. If I would want, I could fix it. I could put something in between those moving parts, so it wouldn't wobble anymore. So yeah, I see those things as fixable. Anyway, getting this clasp, such a nice clasp for under 100 euros, I think it's very nice. And this engraving, I like it a lot. It does look nice. It looks like expensive watch of some kind. Doesn't look like a watch for under 100 euros. <laughs> yeah, so it feels great. Quality is good, no complaints, really nice. The only problem for me is that you see the biggest point for me with this watch is this shiny bezel shiny metal bezel it is beautiful it is absolutely beautiful but with this shiny stainless steel bracelet it kind of disappears a little bit if you know what i mean you don't see that bezel that much with this bracelet so let's swap it out with some leather strap oh yeah that's what i'm talking about this shiny bezel just pops out and becomes so much more noticeable much more alive with some kind of a leather strap especially from the third person view from the distance like this up close it's not really that noticeable but you will see i'll show you later on sorry forgot to do measurements let's do them very quickly the zero in the calipers so the thickness is roughly 13 millimeters lock to lock distance is is about 46.6 millimeters the diameter is rather difficult to measure the diameter of chronograph watch so let's measure the bezel the bezel is 38.5 millimeters also let's te test if it has sapphire sorry battery is dying out so you won't get full readings so any readings will be good yeah yes it's sapphire crystal everything is fine also, I really like how it looks like on this green, military green strap. It's a strap monster. It does look wonderful. And how about this blue one? Oh, yes, it does look wonderful. By the way, it has only 30 meters of water resistance. So it's just splash proof, which is a shame. It's really a shame. So it doesn't have screw down crown, as you can see. Oh, yes, it looks beautiful on this blue one does look nice black strap looks nice as well it works works very well with these black rings does look beautiful yeah very nice also let me tell you something about the dial itself uh, this casio has completely white dial as white as it can get but camera just doesn't pick that up this partner has slightly silver dial it has that slightly gray shade slightly silvery look it's not completely white and you see the problem with completely white dials they tend to look like a cheap plastic like a piece of paper but when the dial has slight 
silver shade it does look a little bit richer well this one doesn't look as rich as this one this one is just incredible i mean let me zoom in a little bit oh yes oh yes that 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 is rich that's how rich dial looks like <laughs> and this one on camera it appears to be completely white in pictures as well but in person when you catch this dial on certain angle you can see that it it has a lot of silver shade and looking up close there is another nice thing which i would like to mention inside of those black rings the edge and outside of those black rings just the very edge of the dial is polished out even from the distance i do see this shininess in the mirror when i look in the mirror with this watch i see how the sprinkles sparkle oh my god that looks so incredible the watch under 100 euros has such a fine detail is polished out that just looks incredible quite a quirky thing that the major crown is not a screw down crown yet pushers are actually screw down <laughs> so i believe i don't need to show you the functions of this chronograph you are all very familiar with this seiko mecha quartz movement yeah, all, all I can say is that I really like the feedback of these buttons. They have very clicky, also very audible click. I'll show you how this button sounds next to the microphone. Yeah, so it has that little metal click. Very satisfying. Hello YouTube people once again. Let's play a little game. I'll put the watch on and you will tell me which one looks better. <laughs> so let's start with these watches on metal bracelets. So first of all this one chronograph watch i have doubts if this watch looks good with this kind of outfit because it looks a little bit sporty doesn't it i mean it's shiny it's nice but it does look a little bit sporty now in comparison i'm gonna quickly switch to another parness that has just the date function <laughs> if you know what i mean yeah this one i mean i don't want to persuade you to one side or another but i want to tell you my opinion this looks a little bit better with this kind of outfit looks a little bit more elegant and i kind of want to keep this one better but technically i want to keep another one but about those technical differences we're going to talk a, a little bit later on you see this one looks very good on bracelet yeah it does look very good on bracelet and this one this one doesn't look it looks good on bracelet yeah it does but it looks a lot better on leather strap because then you notice this shiny bezel a lot more so let's quickly change to leather straps let's see how they're gonna look like right and as you can see this shiny bezel becomes a lot more noticeable a lot prettier becomes center of attention of this watch together with these black rings me personally, I prefer how it looks like, like this. This is how I wear this watch the most. This one also is a strap monster. It does look very nice on many straps. But my wife says that this watch looks good only on original bracelet and this leather strap. All nylon straps, silicone straps makes this watch look cheap. I can't, it, she says I just ruined the watch when I put this watch on silicone straps or nylon straps and this how this watch looks like when i go to do some kind of water activities you know swimming pools jacuzzi saunas etc i take this watch and put it on this silicone strap and it does feel wonderful in water activities and that's kind of funny thing you know i have several diver divers watches and diving style watches and just you know situation i sit naked in jacuzzi and there is a big bulky diver watch on the wrist it just doesn't feel right somehow it's like why why do you need this kind of a big bulky thing on your wrist are you trying to show off or something that's how i feel with diver watch in that kind of situation it, it looks okay when i'm fully dressed and you know diver watch on the wrist it looks nice but when i get naked skinny boy with this big bulky diver watch on the wrist like it looks a little bit out of place that's why this watch is my diver watch actually it has screw down crown even though it is rated, rated only at 50 meters of water resistance, I trust it because of this screw down crown and I never had any problems in terms of water resistance. And I be into water activities with this watch quite a lot. So that's 
that's my type of a diver watch. <laughs> and that's how this chronograph looks on the same silicon strap. But in my opinion, it is a little bit pointless putting this chronograph on some kind of water resistant silicon straps because the watch itself is just what uh, splash proof. And for me personally, that's the biggest problem with this watch that I just don't have that ease of mind with this watch. I that I can't take it to some water activities, etc. I, I lose half of the fun with this watch. You know what? Let's talk about differences. Uh, how I think about choosing which one to keep, which one to sell. The strong point of this watch is that it is a quartz movement. And I always prefer quartz over automatic watch. Uh, especially when that automatic watch is just some kind of a cheap Chinese watch for under 100 euros. And my problem with this watch is in terms of the accuracy, I can get it to from 0 to plus 5. It does fluctuate from day to day. Sometimes it's from 0 to 5, sometimes it's from 5 to plus 10. And that just gets on my nerves. It's just so annoying. Even though those numbers are still within, with, within a reasonable range, it's still so annoying to me. I just hate it. I hate wearing this watch daily because of that uh, fluctuation of the accuracy. So for me, that's very, very strong negative point, that mechanical movement. And this one being quartz is just, oh my God. If this little Parnis were, uh, would have some kind of a cheap Miyota quartz movement that most Casio watches have, I wouldn't even have questions. I would never sell this watch. That would be just out of the question. That would be like, that's it. That's the watch I'm gonna have for the rest of my life, basically. Would never sell it. Right now, this one wins this battle, but it loses the battle because it doesn't have water resistance. And in terms of a design, I kind of prefer this one. I mean, look at it. It's so beautiful. It's so simple, so elegant. This one also, it's very nice watch, but it is a little bit busy being a chronograph. It's a nice chronograph, but it's a little bit busy. Yeah, and another thing, you see this parness, well, it's a homage to Rolex, they just and together with this original bracelet it looks like it looks more of a copy rather than some kind of a homage it's like almost one-to-one -one size everything all small details it's the same as rolex they just and for me that's a little bit of a problem that even the movement even the movement of the watch looks like a just completely rip off of a rolex they just and for me that's a little bit of a problem to be honest and this Rolex Daytona homage is a little bit more of a homage rather than straight up a copy because it does have quite a bit of differences. The major difference being is uh, it is 38.5 millimeters in diameter, while as I know Daytona is 40 millimeters, I believe. So yeah, that's a huge difference in size, honestly. And in terms of a design, I honestly gonna say that I haven't seen a Rolex Daytona in person in real life ever. I just saw it in pictures. But from what I've seen, I can tell you that I prefer the look of this Parnas because it looks a little bit cleaner, a little bit more elegant. Why? Because it has less text on the dial. It doesn't have uh, red text on the dial saying something or, you know, spreadsheet of functions etc it's just a little bit cleaner more elegant looking watch and i like smaller size as well and <laughs> come on i'm i'm speaking like i'm choosing between uh, original dayton and this one sorry it's not 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 how it is i'm just telling the differences and another little difference is that it doesn't have markers at three six and nine and also the indexes themselves are a little bit different they don't have the pointy and so there are probably some more differences that I haven't noticed yet, but anyway, even though, yeah, it's, it's still very close. It's still very close to being just a knockoff, just complete copy, but it does have differences. While this one is like a complete knockoff of a Rolex Datejust, in my opinion, it's just, come on, it's like, so psychologically, I feel better wearing this watch. And I almost forgot. So where does it go on my website? ThomasWatchReviews.com Where I rate watches into different tier lists. As you already understand, this is definitely a keeper. I have no doubts. This is a keeper. That's where it goes. But I still don't know which one to keep. 
and which one to sell because they both look incredible incredible looking beautiful wonderful watches they have their own pluses and minuses and i feel very very indecisive which one to keep which one to sell i love them both very much i hate the movement of this watch i hate that this one is just water splash proof and anyway pluses minuses guys tell me your opinion in the comments i really want to read your comments what do you think Maybe you will tell me something that I haven't thought about yet and you will change my mind, will help me to decide. Okay, anyway, thank you guys for watching. Have a beautiful day. Goodbye.